does have like a residue on it, sort of quite sticky. I'm thinking it maybe it's a varnish. I can feel it and I can feel it sort of coming off. Um, so I was just going to sand this back. We'll just try to sand it rather than taking anything off it, not stripping it. And we'll see how that goes. Fancy. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. It's Danny from Our Humble Home. Today I'm going to be making over this little coffee table. It was quite small. It reminded me of the one I did for Brandon and Amy actually when I saw it advertised. Because I got it on the Facebook marketplace for $20. But when I went to pick it up, it was considerably smaller. Um, but that was fine because after the big massive monster coffee table I did, it was nice to have something small to work on. <laughs> Um, so I thought for this I would make this into a really pretty coastal style coffee table. First thing I'm doing is sanding it back so I hope you stick with me and enjoy the transformation. It did take a bit to sand this back. This was actually the next morning and looking at it there were bits that I hadn't got off of the stain um, and also there were little divots and things, marks on it so I used some 80 grit sandpaper and I spent probably about 20 minutes to half an hour just sanding it down um, and getting it as clean and neat as possible. So after sanding, I cleaned it all down. I used sugar soap first and wiped it over because that gets a lot of the dirt off and then I went over it with a watery rag and wiped it down to dry it. And I used 120 grit sandpaper just to scuff sand to give the paint something to adhere to. these sides of the sanded part down just so they don't get paint on them and I'm using prep four in one uh, if you've seen any of my other videos I don't normally use a primer this is actually a primer stain blocker sealer and undercoat and so I thought because this was quite dark that I would um, use this I thought I'd use the Kmart mineral paint with this and actually it was funny when I opened this it was a really pale pink color but it's meant to be white but when it went on it was white and it was fine um, it glided on really nice it was very thick 
in the tin but I found that when I put it on it didn't actually seem to cover all that great. I scattered it a really light sand and then I did another coat of mineral paint. So I've just come back for Brandon and Amy's place. We had a beautiful weekend. Um, and I'm looking at this and I'm really disappointed in it because this is with three coats. It's like the CLR primer plus two coats of mineral paint. The mineral paint is thick in the tin but it just goes on so thin. It's not covering anything and I'm sensing a bit of, I don't know whether it's my imagination but a little bit of bleed through, like a bit of discoloration. Yeah, definitely I think and it might not be noticeable through the camera but I can see it so I'm sort of going to in some senses start from scratch what I'm going to do is use some of my or I might sand it back again a little bit I'm not taking anything off just to neaten things up where they might be a little bit thick I'm going to spray it with Kmart matte varnish and I think because I don't have any stain blocker I think that might help and hopefully and then I'm going to resort to my Aldi paint because that that always um, works well and it covers well so I might start doing that and hopefully it will be fine I always give away too much mm. it's like I've got no sense of touch I'm always pouring out my heart no little barley. After I took the tape off, I noticed that there were one or two little areas where um, the paint had sort of seeped through. And also generally on the top, I could see just a really fine line near the edge. So I knew that I would have to sand that back just to neaten it up before I whitewashed. Here, I give my I decided to whitewash the top because I just thought it was a bit orange and to be honest I actually was tossing up whether to whitewash because I was just a bit scared I didn't want to ruin it after all the sanding and I thought it did look quite nice as it was um, but I did want to get the orangey um, intense look out of it so I thought I'd whitewash so what I did was I wiped it down with a watery rag and then this is a dilution of paint that actually was left over from when I did a spray paint project so it was very watery um, yeah I just painted it on with the paintbrush and then I wiped it off until it was all nice and even I repeated the process and I sanded in between until I was happy with the colour.
I'm going to reuse these little handles because there's nothing wrong with them. I um, just don't like the colour and they need cleaning so I removed them. They were really stubborn actually, I couldn't get them out with the screwdriver. I tried a few different sort of bits, if that's what they're called, um, but it just sort of it slid and it wouldn't come out, it wouldn't loosen so I ended up using a hand screwdriver. And this actually worked although I couldn't I didn't take the screws right out they didn't they were too hard and the handle had fallen off anyway so I thought I'd just paint around the screws just giving it another light sand to scuff the surface so the paint will stick. And I'm going to apply again the, um, to uh, it was British paints actually, 4-in-1 prep, so it's the Undercoat Sealer Primer. And I did notice after I had given it a coat of this again, there was some bleed through. There seemed to be some bleed through that I found, but yeah, reading the actual um, tin, I thought I just I just keep doing more coats, and it actually did cover up that little bit of bleed through. And then I just applied the Aldi paint. I think I did two coats of Aldi paint. Um, yeah, and it covered it really well. I wanted to do a feature on the side and if any of you have seen my other video, um, the table I did for Brandon and Amy, um, I did a herringbone pattern on there using popsicle sticks and I'm doing a similar thing here but I'm just doing like, I'm not doing a herringbone pattern, I'm just going to do um, a diagonal pattern with the popsicle sticks and again I sort of thought should I just cover this little panel that I'm putting on the side with wallpaper um, that would have looked really pretty and I mean it would have been covered completely but I just thought I'd, I'd wrap a little bit around and see what it would have looked like that would be nice and I am going to do that at some point with the makeover it's just I think the pattern was a bit big and um, yeah you couldn't really see it all completely so I decided to go ahead with my popsicle stick makeover and I just placed them on the balsa wood panels in a diagonal and I filled in the gaps with white timber filler which gave it quite a nice coastal sort of appearance. It was satisfying but a bit annoying because I had to try to um, cut the ends of the popsicle sticks off and I'm trying to also get through the glue and I use my Maxi Nails glue which sets really hard. I mean it's it's great, it does the job but yeah it was just hard to get through these. But yeah it did the trick and it was actually really satisfying to do actually when, when it got to the point where it just snapped off. <laughs> it was quite fun and it actually was good in that it left nice neat edge along the top and bottom and sides. even really need to put um, the wood filler in and next time I might try just painting this because it would look nice too but um, like I did with the herringbone pattern in another upcycle I thought um, that gave it a really nice coastal look and I thought that this would actually match the top of the whitewash table too and tie the whole thing in and it was actually fun to do as well.
So being a coastal sort of coffee table design, I thought I would put some palm leaves on the side. So I got my Cricut machine out. I designed it on Canva and uh, cut it out with the Cricut machine and placed it on the side of the drawer so that when the drawers are pulled out, you will see this. I simply spray painted the handles in a gloss paint, white paint. I um, had a bit of trouble with it on the cardboard, it stuck. So I have my little contraption down there that I hung them on and painted it that way. And I put them on the front of the drawers and I thought I would decorate it with little tassels. Well, they're quite big tassels actually, but cute. <laughs> What I'm going to do is I was going through what I have. I had some leftover of this. I thought I could put a rose on, but what I did once was made a decal. But this was not the decal. This was left after the decal. So a good idea is if you're doing cricket as well, don't throw out what you've weeded off. Like don't throw out the back. Keep it and you can use it as a stencil. And so that's what I'm going to do on these. I'm going to use some pink chalk paint and just make pretty little coasters and I will sell those with the actual table. I was actually really so chuffed with how this turned out. It was so pretty. I mean, if I were to paint that, it would have been a disaster, but <laughs> just using the stencil. And it's just the leftover um, part of the decal I did. Instead of throwing that bit out, um, yeah, I just saved it and put it aside. And also, this was done with contact paper. It's not even the good vinyl. So I'll put a link up to Cricut contact paper settings as well. I decided to whitewash, which didn't really, I shouldn't have done it. I mean, it worked out okay, but um, because it's not actual wood, it's more like a, I don't know what it is, artificial sort of wood, it, it didn't take, but it's still cute. done this before with my makeovers but since I thought I'm um, starting to sell them I would do it because um, I ac actually painted the bottom of these two and I thought I, maybe I shouldn't have done that in case the paint came up on people's floors when I sell it so I just put on some little floor protectors and the next step basically was just waxing with my glitz beeswax the side panels and the tabletop and sides and then polishing it. I do love this wax because it doesn't really change the colour too much um, and I didn't want this tabletop colour to be changed. I wanted it to stay that nice um, white light look for um, you know to keep that coastal sort of vibe and um, yeah and it's so easy to apply this wax and you actually put it on with a wet rag rub it in and I leave it about half an hour then you go back and polish and it comes up really beautifully side panels that I'd made and then gluing them in place 
Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you get some ideas from it. I'll see you next week. Have a great week. Bye for now.